When many people think of Muslim women, the common stereotype that pops in the mind is the portrayal of a mysterious veiled woman who is oppressed. However, according to Muslim tradition as well as the Quran, women are portrayed in a much different light. Hey guys, welcome back to Fiddy Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and for this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at 10 surprising things that Islam says about women. There's a lot of positive things about women that we're going to just dive into right now. So starting at number 10, they're partners with men. So women are portrayed positively in the Quran as well as the Hadith and the Quran frequently refers to women alongside men and both are described as being friends and partners in the faith. Now in one passage in the Quran, Surah 9 verses 71, it says, the believing men and the believing women are allies of one another. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and establish prayer and give zakah and obey Allah and his messenger. Those Allah will have mercy upon them. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. Number nine brings us the rights to property. So Muslim women were granted the right to own, inherit, as well as sell their own property as they saw fit. They were also allowed to reject forced marriages as well as keep their own names and identities after marriage. They could also initiate divorce and even get an education. And this goes back to the seventh century. So this is completely in contrast to the conditions affecting many women in certain parts of the world today. And the Prophet Muhammad was recorded to have said these words. To seek knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim, male and female. Women are also described as spiritual equals. In the Quran, Surah 4 verses 1, it says, O mankind, be mindful of your duty to your Lord who created you from a single being and from it created its mate. And from the two of them has scattered countless men and women throughout the earth. Fear God in whose name you demand your rights of one another and be mindful of your duty towards the wombs that bore you. God is ever watching over you. So one of the things that this passage highlights is that women are considered to be spiritual equals with men as well as they have the same religious duties. Now let's talk about the role in the home for women. Islam supports the traditional view of how work is divided when it comes to women. You know, women assume the main responsibilities for the house while men are more responsible for the financial support. They go out, they do the work and all of that, but there's a big difference here. In Islam, motherhood as well as homemaking, it's not considered to be less important or rewarding than having a professional career. Motherhood is one of the most important professions as a matter of fact, and it's something that is very honorable. So yes, of course, a lot goes into raising a child. So if a woman wants to do that rather than hiring nannies and all of that, they definitely can do that. And it's something that you shouldn't even look down on. Number six brings us feminine individuality. Kind of alluded to this a little bit based on some of the points that I mentioned, but in Islam, femininity is very much appreciated and Muslim women may seek a higher education if they want to, and they can also work outside of the home or they can volunteer in various different services that are gonna benefit the community. As long as their primary responsibilities are looked after. Now, any money that a Muslim woman earns is her own to spend as she sees fit, but in Islamic tradition, really the man is responsible for maintaining the family and supporting the family financially. Of course women can do that too but in Islam the weight of each is just different and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in this episode but before I get into those points though if you're enjoying this episode so far be sure to leave a like on this video. It really helps more and more and more people see our episodes over time and if this is your first time here at the channel go ahead hit that subscribe button and ring that bell that way you can hang out with us here on MTV Facts every single week. We post videos daily so you can always learn something new about our world, the religions, the culture, and the people that live on our planet. So if those topics interest you, stay a while here on MTD Facts. We'll keep you busy, we'll keep your mind occupied, trust me. All right, so let's move on to number five. Let's talk about marriage rights. So although Muslim parents traditionally play a very important role in arranging different marriages, as well as helping to find marriage partners for their children, both husband and wife must freely agree to the marriage. The Prophet Muhammad did grant the right for marriage annulments to girls who had been forced into marriages against their will. And you see, the relationship between husband and wife in Islam is really an interdependent one and it's based on love and peace. As a matter of fact, in the Quran, it says this, 
and of his signs is this, he created spouses for you from among yourselves that you might find comfort in them and he put between you love and mercy. Surely there are signs in that for people who reflect and that's found in Surah 30 verses 21. Moving on now to number four, women are described as being a grade below men. So what does this actually mean? Well, in the Quran, Surah 4 verses 34, men are described as being a grade above women, but in the matters of law, religion, and society. Husbands are instructors as well as, in a sense, supervisors of their wives. And you know, a wife can be in charge of the home, but her husband does have final say over everything pretty much. Men are also usually held accountable for their wives' actions as well. So since men are responsible for the financial financial support of their family, they also inherit twice of what a woman would inherit because of their responsibility to their wives and to their family. So in the religion of Islam, they do try to keep everything fair between the man and the woman. Let's talk about divorcing Muslim women. Now divorcing Muslim women who did not work outside of their home after marriage do not have a claim on the collective wealth of the couple under Islamic law, except for the amount of money or property that the man agrees to pay her before the woman signs the marriage contract. In the Quran, you'll find this passage in Surah 4 verses 12, and it says, and for you is half of what your wives leave if they have no child. But if they have a child, for you is one fourth of what they leave. After any bequests they may have made or debt. And for the wives is one fourth if you leave no child, but if you leave a child, then for them is an eighth of what you leave after any bequests you may have made or debt. And if a man or woman leaves neither ascendants nor descendants, but has a brother or a sister, then for each one of them is a six. But if they are more than two, they share a third after any bequest which was made or debt. As long as there's no detriment cause, this is an ordinance from Allah and Allah is knowing and forbearing. Now next up, let's talk about intimacy at number two. Women are to be 100% respected in intimate acts as well. The Prophet Muhammad had underlined the importance of foreplay as well as emotional intimacy in sexual relations as the following hadith outlines. So the Prophet Muhammad said, not one of you should fall upon his wife like an animal, but let there first be a messenger between you. And what is that messenger they asked? And the Prophet Muhammad replied, kisses and words. And finally, at number one, let's talk about there being a reward in child care. Now there's one passage that says, a woman questioned the Prophet Muhammad, men go to war and have a great reward for that. So what do women have? He answered, when a woman is pregnant, she has the reward of someone who spends the whole night praying and the whole day fasting. When the contractions strike her, no one knows how much reward God gives her for having to go through this. And when she delivers her child, then for every suck it draws from her, she receives a reward for keeping a soul alive. That passage is taken from the Hadith and in the Quran Surah 2 verses 233, it also says this, mothers may breastfeed their children two complete years for whoever wishes to complete the nursing period. Upon the father is the mother's provision and their clothing according to what is acceptable. No person is charged with more than his capacity. No mother should be harmed through her child and no father through his child. And upon the father's heir is a duty like that of the father. Father. And if they both desire weaning through mutual consent from both of them and consolation, there is no blame upon either of them. And if you wish to have your children nursed by a substitute, there's no blame upon you as long as you give payment according to what is acceptable. And fear Allah and know that Allah is seeing of what you do. All right, guys, so that was a brief look at 10 surprising things that Islam says about women. Really hope that this was very eye opening and that it helped to dismiss some of the stereotypes that you may have had about women in Islam. Be sure to leave your thoughts and comments down below. Join in on the conversation. Also, I'm going to leave you the recommended episode. It's going to be at this end screen, so tap that annotation once you see it. I'm going to get out of here and work on some more episodes for you guys. So until next time, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you soon.